We came to office. We knew we were facing a once-in-a-century pandemic and a once-in-a-generation economic crisis. And we knew this wouldn't be a sprint, it'd be a marathon. The jobs report that came out on Friday uh, was covering April, and everybody had super high expectations. They were saying this is going to be a million new jobs. Some places were saying, forecasting 1.3 million, a blowout. Analysts going into this were saying, what is too much? Is it going to be so high that the economy is overheating? Are we going to see signs that this is too much money being pumped into the economy from the federal government? And instead, we got a very disappointing number, 266,000, about a quarter of what they expected. So it was a huge, huge mismatch between the expectations and what actually came out. And that set off a whole firestorm politically because suddenly um, people were saying, um, you know, the recovery is not going as well as we thought, the, the jobs uh, recovery isn't gonna happen, people are still unemployed. The unemployment rate actually ticked up from six to 6.1%, 6 which was, you know, the first time since the beginning of the pandemic that the unemployment rate actually went up. Um, so it, it was this very kind of alarming and upsetting report. Um, and when, when you delve down deep into it, you could see uh, a couple of maybe um, green shoots, some signs of, of life um, that um, some of the gains were happening in restaurants and bars showing that that sector is sort of starting to recover. Um, so things like that maybe gave people some hope, but all in all, um, everything else either grew or shrank. Um, and one of the big questions that is surrounding all of this is, uh, well, is this just because there's a labor shortage. What's a labor shortage? It means that there are more jobs than there are people to fill them. So with 9 million unemployed Americans, why would there be a labor shortage? Um, and this is where the, the Republican criticism of democratic policy is coming in. They're saying there's a labor shortage because you are paying people very generous unemployment benefits and why would you go out and start working when you are making potentially more by sitting at home? Janet Yellen, the Treasury Secretary, says, no, that's, that's not true. Uh, we can sort of look at state level evidence and see that that's not exactly right because in the different states we can compare what, how, how generous the unemployment levels are and how, um, and how high the, uh, the joblessness is, and that doesn't hold up. Um, but it feels intuitively true and, and there might be truth to it. It might be part of it. Another question, though, is what else could be fueling it? So, so Democrats say, well, look, um, we still have a problem with a pandemic. It hasn't gone away. <laughs> um, there are people that are still not vaccinated. There are people that don't want to go back to work in crowded office settings. Um, and the economists on the left are saying if there were a labor shortage, prices would go up. There's a simple market mechanism for filling a labor shortage. It's rising wages. And when you pay people more, they will come to work. Um, another thing that we know about every recession, especially a big dramatic one like this one, is that the economy just doesn't go back to how it was. It changes and everyone can feel that viscerally because the things that we do um, every day have changed. The things that we spend money on have changed. The way that our economy works has changed. Um, so there's certainly an argument to be made that it's going to take a little while to sort of build back what our new economy looks like.